So Chris, before um, making this movie, when you thought of Wonder Woman, what image came to your mind? Uh, the image of Linda Carter as Wonder Woman with the outfit and the, the um, tiara and uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then what was it about this project that made you want to be a part of it? Patty Jenkins, the director, really was the selling point to me. I met her um, having not read the script, not knowing anything about the story, and she pitched me what she wanted to do before the script had been completed. And uh, I loved it and thought it was a character that I could, I could play and knew an angle in on it. And she referenced uh, these movies like Romancing the Stone and, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Indiana Jones and I was Temple of Doom and I was I was sold. So who is this character? Who is uh, Steve Trevor and how does he change uh, Diana's life? Steve Trevor is a World War I pilot and spy working for the British who has just captured stolen this notebook full of these pretty awful equations for this awful or these great equations for this awful gas that's going to kill all these allies and uh he crash lands on this island and meets her, and he's a, a war-weary, jaded realist in this awful time of the first mechanized war, and she's this bright-eyed, bushy-tailed idealist, uh, and uh, she teaches him a little bit about hope, and he teaches her a lot about, a little bit about what it means to be alive in the real world, and I think that's what, what they give each other. How was it for you to be to shoot those scenes on that island where you're the only man? It was such a trip, man. It was uh, the biggest. The, the, I mean, it was heaven. I was in Italy with a bunch of beautiful women. Um, but what was interesting is seeing all the men who were coming to set with the baby strollers and the and the kids watching at Video Village. <laughs> all the women worked, which you know it was definitely not something you normally see. So it was uh, it was cool. It was fun. That relationship uh, between Steve and Diana is fun, and it's beautiful, and it's entertaining. That clash between those two opposite people that somehow have this great chemistry. Yeah. You know, it's the, I, I th that relationship has always uh, been a great one to see on screen, from uh, Rosalind Russell, Cary Grant, and his girl Friday, to, as I mentioned, to uh, Kathleen Turner, Michael Douglas, to... Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock. To, you know, anytime there's the couple that you want to see together that can't be together that are so different that finally get together, I think it's uh, everybody kind of uh, cheers when that that happens. I had great fun working with Gal and to do comedy is something that I always like to do. So it's great fun. What do you think Gal brought to this role? Uh, Gal has a, a very tricky combination uh, to pull off that she has intrinsically which is great strength and beauty with a real incredible vulnerability and uh, um, uh, not naivete curiosity and uh, which is Wonder Woman which, which is Gal Gal is like she is the, what you see is what you get and then you have great chemistry mm. you really do and that leads to humor also right mm. and even some improv I believe yeah, you know, uh, chemistry is just something people pick up or you have or, or not. And, and Gal is an easy woman to fall in love with, as you can imagine. She's a, just a sweet uh, lady, a strong woman, uh, beautiful, um, uh, just v genetic lottery kind of uh, stuff. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, she's an easy woman to fall in love with. Also, it must be interesting for an actor to um, to be in that period of time, which was very dramatic, but very important also in history in World War II. How did you prepare the role? Uh, I, I did look up a lot of pictures of World War One. I. I was in a much fami more familiar with World War II, obviously. So um, just to see what it was like in the trenches, and, and it was a brutal, awful war because they were essentially fighting it just like they had done pre-industrial revolution with you know uh, onward uh, soldier where they just come out of these trenches and get slaughtered because the weapons were outmatching the kind of tactical uh, ground warfare that they were fighting so it was just miserable so that's I think the, the it was so smart of Patty to place in World War One because aesthetically and cinematically it's a, a time period we don't often see and also because it's it, it's kind of the beginning of 
of the fast, swift decline of humanity towards just absolute, all-out, brutal, violent warfare. And that's what Diana has to face as this bright-eyed woman and what Steve has to teach her a little bit about. You mentioned um, earlier how you were looking forward to working with Patty, which was one of the main yeah. reasons to make this movie for you. Um, now that you have done it, what, what, what is she like on set as a director? What kind of a uh, filmmaker is she? She's a, a, an exquisite filmmaker. You, you don't make a m much better than her. She, um, uh, she's a general in the best sense. She's decisive, quick, clear, uh, concise, positive, uplifting. She gets the troops, you know, revved up. Uh, but she can also be very quiet. She listens extraordinarily well, and she listens extraordinarily well to her actors. So, uh, you know, some people uh, compose with major and minor notes, and she does that, but also with sevenths and and you know ninths and minor ninths, and she's just very, you know, very nuanced. The movie also gave you the opportunity to work on location in England and mm. in, in Italy. And I believe you even had some time to travel around Italy, right? I had a great time in Italy. All, the women had to work because it was the Themyscira, the land of the Amazon, so it was the time for the women to, they worked steadily throughout that month or so. I worked for two weeks and then I worked for a week and then traveled for three. <laughs> so I got a paid vacation. I was in, uh, I mean, I feel uh, a little guilty saying this. I was, we were shooting outside of Naples on the Amalfi Coast. So then we went through Ravello and through all the beautiful towns on the Amalfi Coast, back to Naples, to Capri, to, uh, I love just saying Capri that way, Capri. And then uh, back through Naples to Herculaneum, from Herculaneum up to Rome, uh, spent seven days in Rome. It was, I had a great time. But how was those tough scenes that reflect um, such a horrible war like World War One to shoot? And you were you're in a lot of action in a lot of those moments. What, what, what was that like? Yeah, I just run a lot and then fire my gun a couple of times. So I, my, my, my physical, uh, my physical uh, involvement uh, and responsibility in this film was, was not all that high. Uh, uh, thank God. Um, Credit goes really, t you know, to the the production designer. I mean, uh, uh, where were we? Shepperton or leaves the I forget what studio we were at, but uh, they created they created a muddy patch of war torn land with two trenches on either side that looked so realistic it was just unbelievable the attention to detail that the, these uh, the production team spent on it. It's just just really really unbelievable. Um, and we're f all kitted out in World War One gear, and to realize what it was like to run in those boots with those wool stockings was just absolutely awful. Um, so it really gave you gave you a sense in the most fictional make believe way what it what it potentially could have felt like even in the most remotest sense. Um, but uh, yeah.